Hey everyone, we're at the Noctua booth now at Computex 2019, and Noctua's always got some pretty cool stuff at the show. Last year we gave them the award for the least amount of RGB shit at a booth, and so we've returned, and once again it looks like Noctua will be receiving that award because I've seen uh, nary an LED while here. So the things at the show that are of most interest are probably going to be the passive cooler, which I've got in front of me. There's an NHD15 uh, Sort of, I mean, I don't want to say refresh because that downplays it, but there's a new NHD 15, let's call it that. And that's the big cooler that's probably iconic and you likely recognize. The A, uh, A series fan now in 140 millimeters has gotten some updates, so we have a prototype on that to talk through. And then there's just some cool testing setups behind me that I'll mention as well. Before that, this video is brought to you by the Gigabyte Z390 AORUS Master Motherboard, which comes equipped with one of the more powerful Z390 VRMs for heavier overclocks on the new 9th gen Intel CPUs. The AORUS Master is also one of the few motherboards with a real heatsink this generation, featuring a mix of high surface area fins and looks oriented cover blocks. Oh, and it's also got updated RGB illumination. Learn more at the link below. Let's start with the passive cooler. So in front of me, this passive cooler is set up in the system next to me. Uh, there are actually no fans in this right now. In fact, they've even gotten a bit cheeky with it, and it says, caution, service may be hot, uh, because there's zero fans. This can be set up, obviously, with a fan if you wanted to. There's another test they did with a fan. Wow, that actually is genuinely pretty hot. Uh, it, it is radiating quite a bit out the top. But um, the cooler, so there's no name for it yet. It's just fanless cooler right now. We'll have a name later. Uh, the target for release date is pretty far out, so this is an early prototype. Noctua is still doing a lot of tweaking on it, but you'll notice in B-roll that the fins are actually spaced pretty far apart. This is intentional. When you don't have a fan with some sort of static pressure to force air through it, uh, through the fin stack that is, you do end up with a, a worse scenario for passive cooling. So what you want is a bit of space between each of the fins and the fin stack. The fin density is lower and that's so that natural convection can take its course and you're relying on just physics at that point. So pretty simple rather than forcing all the air through with a fan and doing it uh, sort of semi-manually. So this one right now it's set up running about 120 watt load with a 9900K and could run higher with uh, a fan in the back. So I think we heard about 180 watts with a fan, just like a top mounted exhaust fan or something. But 120 watt 9900K uh, is, is really not bad for a passive cooling solution. For the prototype in front of me, this one has 1.5 millimeter thick aluminum fins. Uh, so one, aluminum because weight and heavy, and you don't want to rip the socket out of the board, and two, uh, copper at some point doesn't really uh, do a whole lot for you in, in ways that are meaningful versus the price. But there is still copper cold plates nickel plated, uh, copper heat pipes nickel plated, those are sintered, and it is using a, a pretty widely spaced fin stack. What might change is all of these specs. So it's a prototype. First half of 2020 means that anything I've just said is, is uh, subject to change based on Octua's in-house testing. Uh, for example, the fin thickness could end up coming down to something like 0.5 millimeters rather than 1.5, or you can maybe go up to one. It's really uh, up in the air at present. But uh, one of the biggest issues is with the press. So the manufacturing process the press that uh, a lot of the companies use, like we've seen in our factory tours recently, they're, they're those big giant ones that weigh like 150 tons. They come down and smash and stamp the fins. And then sometimes they also contain uh, a setup that can fold the fins into themselves to assemble the whole stack in an automated fashion. So Noctua's press stops at 0.5 millimeter fin thickness which means that going up to 1.5 millimeters poses a production challenge. So Noctua is still trying to figure out what to do to overcome that because it's a multi-million dollar investment to just buy a press that can do 1.5 to 2 millimeter fin thickness. Uh, those start, well, I mean, yeah, it's, it's millions of dollars. So they have to figure out a solution to that. For example, they could end up uh, cutting out the automated, automatic interlocking of the fins and go with a manual assembly approach. That would do it. But um, that's still all up in the air. And I think that covers most of it. So the price target is totally TBD. Noctua would like to see it below $100, but uh, we're not going to hold them to that until we see you know, how they overcome the manufacturing difficulties. For size, it's about the same size as an NHD 15. So it's a 165 millimeter tall cooler from the socket, and then the rest is, is roughly the same as the D15. I think that covers the passive one. Beyond the 
passive cooler, which is just a cool tech demo. Uh, I guess we'll talk about the NHD 15 updates next. There's a couple of them behind me, but this one is the TR4 version, which you can tell by looking at the cold plate. So it's got the wider cold plate. In previous testing, when TR4 came out, first gen, we found with a uh, 1950X that increasing from a, a same cooler, so like for like test, everything identical, uh, just changing the cold plate size, it did actually have a significant impact, and that's because you've got a larger IHS and it's spreading the heat. So, if, I mean, if you're not contacting the whole IHS, you're kind of throwing away some of the benefit of having a larger IHS. The differences for this one versus previously, the fin density is the same, fin pitch is the same. Uh, heat pipes, they've gone up to seven from six. So, uh, size is a bit different, it's a bit wider. And then for the TR4 version, the, uh, the spacing for PCIe was a, obviously a major consideration. So, to, to make sure there's clearance for PCIe, uh, the heat pipes have been moved a little bit versus the standard models, which you can see over there. So it's an asymmetrical heat pipe layout instead of a symmetrical one. It should be pretty clear on camera. TBD on pricing, maybe 20-ish more than the current units that are out there, but don't hold them to that. And then there's some production level improvements as well. So uh, improvements to the heat pipe that weren't really specified. They're still centered though. And then uh, I think there's a demo behind me running a TR4 system with a 2990WX 32 core CPU. It's at 440 watts. All that really matters is the amount of heat that's generated, not the frequency, because the goal is cooling it. So for the demo, 440 watts, it is still running. So it's at about an 87 degree T die right now and uh, just running Prime 95 torturously on end in poor test conditions because, I mean, it's against a wall in a convention center that's kind of warm. So uh, not bad. But that's the TR4, or the, the cooler anyway, the NHD15. And I think the last, there's a couple of fans. I'll just point out quickly, we'll show B-roll of. So there's going to be some white fans coming. Uh, the black fans are getting finalized for the A-series 120 millimeter cooler, and then the black heat sinks that Knox was shown a few times now are getting finalized as well. Apparently there's some production challenges with cleaning the solder off, to the, the residue of the solder, and then uh, getting the powder coating on. So that's being finalized still. Uh, then this fan is the updated a, well, it's the 140 millimeter A series. We talked about this at Computex last year, one year ago, and the difference is that uh, when when we talked to, well, the difference is everything in the fan. But when we talked to Noctua, they were saying, well, it's not really so easy as just scaling it up in CAD and then making a new fan. So there's some markings on here that indicate that it's gone through a couple of revisions, different changes. Things can change, like. Uh, how many blades you have, the thickness of the blades, the sweep of the blade, where the blade starts to sweep down the hub, uh, how close the blade is to the outer side of it, the design on the top of the blades, uh, lots, lots and lots of things can change. So that's in prototyping, they're just kind of showing it off to tell you that it is eventually going to happen and Noctua could probably make it today, but does want to push a bit more uh, on the performance side to get a meaningful improvement. So we'll keep you updated on when that happens. I think that covers the Noctua booth. Thank you for watching. As always, you can subscribe for more, or you can go to store.gamersnexus.net to help us out directly, and patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out there as well. I don't have any awards with me this time, unfortunately, because they're too heavy, but if I had one, I would give one to Noctua for still having the least amount of RGB shit at a booth. I'll see you all next time.